was actually thinking about it. it probably this was the here. scene just a few moments ago as the space shuttle Discovery and her external Live fuel tank part of company uh, about 160 Jettison nautical miles tank. above the planet's surface. What a spectacular shot. We weren't sure we were going to see that live up until the bitter end there. That shot is there to help engineers make sure there's no um, debris that fell off that tank, causing a problem to the orbiter itself. But uh, it sure served a nice public relations factor as well. That was a, a fun shot to watch. Joining us once again, Lou Dobbs and Lori Garver. Um, Lou, that's, that, that was a fun launch to watch, being able to see it like we just did. But uh, the serious business... Yeah, the serious business behind all of this is really what's next for NASA. Lots of talk about retiring the shuttle fleet, lots of talk about a new generation of vehicles, lots of talk about how NASA does business. It, it's a lot for the agency to handle right now. You think they're up to it? I do think they're up to it. I have to be honest with you, Miles, after watching the external tank separate uh, with the orbiter and to see those amazing pictures as the orbiter fired its engines, I mean, that's just breathtaking. The thrill of a launch is always amazing, uh, but that was just uh, an incredible added bonus. and. Uh, uh, we appreciate you bringing it to us. Uh, the direction for uh, NASA now is is clarifying a bit. We've gone through, as you know, Miles, three administrators for NASA, a beleaguered agency to begin with in the less than four years, three. It was an unsettled organization uh, uh, before Columbia. It was a bureaucracy. As I was saying earlier, Walter Rissen used to say that a bureaucracy is a state of mind, and that state of mind gripped NASA. I have not, and I don't know what your experience has been, but I have not heard so much excitement and just uh, optimism uh, as surrounds an administrator who has been there just about three months. Dr. Michael uh, Griffin is just uh, being received with open arms by uh, the, the great professionals of NASA. Uh, you heard uh, George Diller say uh, with the launch of Discovery, uh, on to the moon, Mars, and beyond, and that is the mission for NASA. It's a clear statement. Um, the, the days of uh, when Dan Golden was administrator of Cheaper, Better, Faster, it looks like we have the hope uh, that it will be better and farther and that this country is once again willing to invest in our space program. The, the wonderful professionals, and you know the miles at, at, at NASA, uh, have been beset by budget constraints, uh, by often awkward and conflicting missions. Uh, it looks like uh, Michael Griffin and President Bush, to, to his credit, are bringing direction again to NASA. Now the question will be, um, Will Congress support the budget and move us ahead, whether it is an orbital uh, space plane, uh, whether it be an extension of shuttle, or perhaps another derivation of a space vehicle? Uh, we hope to hear the outline soon, uh, but we're behind on schedule with the International Space Station now by more than a year. We've been dependent upon Proton and Soyuz, the Russians, to supply uh, Alpha, and we now need, uh, and uh, it looks like we could expect, uh, the shuttle to take up its part in uh, restoring the uh, International Space Station, resupplying, um, and getting us ready to, to build that uh, that platform to, to move ahead to, to the moon. So I'm, I, for one, think there is great reason for the people of NASA, for all of us, to be optimistic about where NASA is now headed. Lori Garver, do you share that optimism? Because one of the big concerns that I talk, hear from the rank and file here is as uh, NASA marches toward retiring the shuttle fleet by 2010, maybe 15 missions, maybe less, uh, there is some concern there will be this down period when there are no flights and they lose a lot of good people. Is that a big concern? Well, there's an interesting dilemma NASA finds itself in. Here we are on this great day of returning the shuttle to flight. We announce, uh, as Lou just said, that we're going back to the moon, onto Mars and beyond. But in order to do that, we have to retire the very vehicle that uh, is taking us on this exciting mission today. Uh, a lot has been made of retiring the shuttle, of what will follow it, and this gap uh, between uh, having human spaceflight. I guess in my view, we've just had a two and a half year gap in human spaceflight. And keep in mind that we had Americans 100% of that time on the International Space Station, thanks to our partners, the Russians. So to me, I think it's probably more important that we move on to develop new vehicles with new technology beyond these next 15 or so space shuttle flights, uh, even if there is a gap between the time when U.S. can launch humans in space. All right, Lori Garver and Lou Dobbs, thank you very much. We're going to be back with more. We'll button things up with Jim Riley, and we'll tell you why they're eating beans right now in the Launch Control Center. Stay with us.
In the launch control center, there's an old tradition. After a successful launch, they eat beans. Why? That's true. It goes way back. I'm not sure exactly what their tradition is, but after every successful launch, they all adjourn to the lobby, and they're all eating beans right now. There was a launch director, I think, way back, who had a bean fetish, and apparently there was some good luck associated with all that. I assume these beans will be savored as much as any plate of beans ever eaten by this team. Probably so. There's been a long time between this plate of beans and the last ones those guys have had. Your, your thoughts two and a half years later, after all we've witnessed the tragedy of Columbia to the triumph of the few last few moments we saw here. We're better off than we were, fortunately, and uh, today's demonstration of what looks to be a flawless launch is just one more indication that we're back in space and we're going to stay. They're back in space, and of course they'll be spending a lot of time making sure they have a nice, safe vehicle, and we'll be tracking that every step of the way. we got a 12-day 12 12 day mission ahead, and uh, of course CNN remains the place to uh, stay up to date on it.